वेलकम इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट दी ओवरसीज सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया सो वॉट इज द प्रेजेंट कॉन्टेक्स सो वॉट हैपन द कर्नाटका गवर्नमेंट एक्चुअली डिबार्ड व्यू ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स हु वर हैव द ओ सी आई कार्ड एंड द रिसेंट जजमेंट बाई द कोर्ट सेज दैट नो ओ सी आई होल्डर्स आर ऑल्सो एलिजिबल टू टेक द एग्जामिनेशन एंड एडमिशन अंडर द कोटा सो दिस इज द रिसेंट कॉन्टेक्स दैट इज वाई वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द ओवरसीज सिटीजन ऑफ इंडिया वेन यू आर रीडिंग योर जी एस पेपर टू पॉलिटी इन दैट द मेजर सोर्स विच यू जनरली रेफर इज लक्ष्मी कांत देर इज अ चैप्टर ऑन सिटीजनशिप and this chapter has become very important in the recent context also because of the uh, amendment act and apart from that also it is important for you to know what is exactly ocis poi and your nri so these are three important terms which are associated with people who are of indian origin but they have not been living in india for some time so what kind of citizens can they have what kind of benefits do they have so this is something uh, you need to know from polity perspective in this video we will discuss about the overseas citizen of india so let's start so government of india launched the overseas citizenship of india which is the oci scheme by making amendment to the citizenship act of 1955 so so far before the amendment act came into picture at the citizenship act of 19 55 is the main act which define all the citizenship criteria for a indian citizen what kind of through what ways they could have the indian citizen who are indian citizen and how that citizenship could be terminated and how anybody could register for citizenship all these things are mentioned in the citizenship act of 1955 so under by making the amendment to this particular act only government of india launched the oci scheme in 2005 the government of india launched the overseas scheme by making the amendment to citizenship act and as well as there is a possibility that the overseas citizenship of india in the later uh, they have merged it with the poi so right now the poi and oci get the oci card only so that is the re recent update regarding the oci now let's move forward and talk about who all are eligible so it cannot be given to everybody so there is a certain criteria which makes the people eligible to apply for the oci card what are those so must be a citizen of india at the time on or after the constitution came into effect which means that the person was on 26 january 1950 a citizen of india or after the constitution came into effect eligible to become citizen of india on 26 january 1950 or he was eligible to become so even though if he was not the citizen at that point of time he or she was eligible to become the citizen then the person who belong to a territory that became part of india after 15 august 1957 so on 15 august 1957 india got its independence and it become the union so in that regard what all territory which were not part of india so far the people who were residing over there will also get the citizenship of india and in that regard they are eligible to apply for the overseas card child or the descendant of the above mentioned category so any person who is like the child or the descendant would get the uh, eligibility to apply for oci card minor child of the person mentioned in the above category so in all these four categories the minor child would be eligible minor child uh, who is either one or both parents are citizen of india again a minor child who is either one uh, or both of the parents are citizen of india can apply for the oci card and also the foreign spouse of citizen of india so if the marriage is registered there is a condition that the marriage should be registered if the marriage is registered then the spouse also get a chance to become the citizen of india if they have married the citizen of india so these are the eligibility criteria through which the oci card could be provided to citizens so this is how the uh, things have been mentioned in by amending the citizenship act of 
Now let's move forward and try to see why this is a sought after card holders, like why OCI card is actually required. So first of all, it gives lifelong visa to visit India multiple times. A special permission needed for research work in India. Like if you really want to go for the research work, then you have to apply for a special permission. Otherwise, you can actually get a lifelong visa, which means you can visit India any number of times. No need to register with the Foreigners Regional Registration Office or FRRO for any length of stay. Like you can stay in India and you don't have to like really go and register yourself. That is again one of the benefits if you have the OCI card. OCI card holders have similar facilities that are extended to NRIs in economic, financial and education field. So they have, they are almost at par with all the kinds of facilities which is provided to NRIs. In fact, you must have been hearing about this news. Now this is something you should go ahead and check it out. NRIs and their uh, like proxy voting. How can they provide the voting or the ballot voting from the where they are present in any other country so uh, try to read about that also this has been in news this is also an important topic so just uh, coming back to the topic oci and nri they have almost equivalent uh, facilities available in terms of economic financial and education field also they are at par to participate in all india pre-medical test and such and this is why like the recent judgment from the court which upheld that uh, oci card holder can apply for admission Seems good because as per the act itself, the card holders could apply or could participate in all India pre-medical test and the such examination. So this is the major detail or major benefits which is provided to the OCI card holder. Now let's also see that what kind of restrictions. So they are not at par with the citizens of India. So they do not have right to vote. So that is something you should know. Every citizen of India we have the right to vote above the age of 18 plus every citizen of india has a right to vote but the oci card holder will not they do not have right to any public service government job again like for an example they could not apply for an ias ips job so that is specifically reserved again for the citizen of india they cannot hold the offices of prime minister President, Vice President, Judges of Supreme Court and High Court, Member of Parliament or Member of Legislative Assembly or Council. So they cannot have all these posts as well. So India, uh, it has to be an Indian citizen who becomes the Prime Minister, President, Vice President, even the Judges of Supreme Court and High Court and the MPs and MLAs and MLC, all of them need to be the Indian citizen and the OCI card holder cannot get any of these posts. And also from the property point of view, they cannot own the agriculture property. So this is debarred for the OCI card holder. They do not have right to own the agriculture property. So these are the restrictions. But overall, if you see OCI card holder are almost at par with the NRIs and they also get a lifelong uh, visa to visit India multiple times. So I hope you have understood this video. If you have any doubt, feel free to drop a comment. Thank you.